Oh no, voltmeter with open circuit. Hello, welcome to another video. Today, I'm trying to bring back to useful an Ico Model 1050 battery charger and eliminator. This came from my grandfather's garage and has obviously been around the block a few times. I've heard many stories of sparks flying, but it seems like it has generally survived the test of time, so it's worth a little cleanup and restoration. All the switches, knobs, and wire connections appear to be in good working order. The main issue is the meters don't work anymore and are essentially not readable. And the line cord desperately needs to be replaced. As you can see, there's a lot of electrical tape on this cord, and I'm sure it is there for good reason. In the video, we will be doing a line cord replacement, cleaning the unit, cleaning and adjusting the current meter, and repairing and cleaning and adjusting the voltmeter. If you want to see another video on voltage meters, check out my panel meter video. Link in all the places. Let's get into it. First, I wanted to do some functional checks just to see if the charger is still generally functional. The charger is being powered through an isolation transformer as well as a Variavac variable AC power supply. So as I increase the AC voltage, we can see the DC voltage increases on the multimeter. This is a good sign. It shows that the general functionality of the unit is as expected. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the line cord. And as we can see, it's seen some better days. It's got a lot of cracks in the cord, and there's also several splices throughout the cord, which were just, you know, the wires were just twisted together. I'm not sure this is even the original plug for this. When we put in the new line cord, just take a note that it is actually a polarized plug. So we'll take a look at this a little later in the video, but you can see here that one of the sides is larger than the other, and so that larger side is actually the neutral connection. So here we can see the guts of the machine. We can see that it's a pretty simple construction. I do have a schematic. I'm going to put that up now for about five seconds, and I'm not going to discuss this too much, but you can pause and take a look at it in more detail if you want. Um, but yeah, so we can take a look at the inside of the machine and see the rectifiers here. You got a big filter capacitor. Uh, there's a variable transformer inside this unit, so that's how it does its variable output voltage. Doing what needs to be done on an old machine like this, vacuuming it out. And of course, don't forget your hearing protection. So let's remove the big capacitor. It's a 6,000 microfarad. Uh, this is not going to be replaced. It still works just fine. It looks like a 1955 date code on it, too. So that dates this unit to somewhere around the, the mid-1950s. All right, so next we're going to take the current meter out and do a little inspection on this. And uh, we can see that the current meter does still have some needle movement, but it's very inaccurate. Um, and it's also extremely dirty, so this needs to get cleaned up and work down a little. So we're going to take the current meter apart, we're going to do a little cleaning on it, and so, you know, clean up the glass, adjust the needle. So one of the things is just, just getting some, uh, this is just isopropyl alcohol, I'm just going to put a little bit of that inside and just try and clean it up to make sure the movement is smooth. We're going to do a little bit of faceplate alignment, and then the actual faceplate has little uh, tags on each end. Those get adjusted, and that determines where the needle starts and stops. As you can see here, the meter stops not at zero, so this needs to be adjusted so that that needle falls down to the zero position. And uh, cleaning the glass is done very carefully. I don't want to break the only glass piece that I have here. And with some video magic, look at that nice clean glass. And as always, doing some functional checks while you're putting things back together is important to make sure things actually work. Nothing worse than putting it all back together and finding out it doesn't work. And then of course we've got to put it all back together. One of the most annoying parts of these meters is they use these little metal tabs around the perimeter. And so you have to bend the tabs up to get it uh, apart and then you got to bend the tabs back over to put it back together. There's only so many times you can bend those tabs. Somehow manage to not break any tabs in this entire repair. So here on the current meter, we can see the same 1955 date code as the capacitor, again, so verifying this machine is from the mid-1950s. Moving on, 
we're doing the voltage meter. Guess what? It doesn't work. The resistor should be 1.1 kilo ohm, but that measured as 1.8 kilo ohm, so that is also bad. Oh no, voltmeter with open circuit. Guess what that means? That means it can't measure voltage. The issue is the coil, so it is time to replace the coil. So first thing we have to do is cut this old coil off. We'll do a little inspecting and you can see that it's got hundreds of turns. Unfortunately, the smallest magnet wire I have is 28 gauge, so I will not be able to wind nearly as many windings, which will decrease the sensitivity of this meter. This means a lower value series resistor will be required to get needle deflection. This also means higher idle power consumption, but a little ballast on an analog supply like this is okay. and will actually help keep the output a little bit more stable uh, since this is an unregulated supply. I do see some room for future upgrades though. Here we're testing the needle movement after rewinding the coil. It's alive, but it uses a lot of current. So some ohms law will be needed to determine the size of the resistors to calibrate the voltage meter. We'll do that later on. So here, same thing again, check that voltage meter before we put it back in the case. Of course, you got to label your, your meter. So here you can put, see the plus and the minus. Of course, we got to put everything back together. There wasn't a lot of concern for space inside these units in terms of getting screws and bolts and nuts and things in the easy to access places. So one of the last things to do is rewire the incoming power. The transformer wire was wrapped around the fuse holder before it was soldered, so it's very difficult to remove this wire. I ended up cutting the wire and then desoldering the remaining wire end. The way this was set up before, the AC line was fused on one side and switched on the other. It had a non-polarized plug, as I showed earlier. The new setup is such that the hot side of the incoming AC power is fed into the fuse first and then through the switch, then finally to the transformer. This way, if a fault does occur, the unit can only be at neutral potential. I did a final 18.2 ohm resistor adjustment to get the front panel voltage meter in alignment. Total, about 53 ohms. Finishing touches. The line cord strain relief is installed with its sort of pointless rubber grommet, but at least it won't get any dust in it. Add some screws. All the original screws still. Not one stripped screw. Okay, time for some functional checks. I'm going to turn it on and crank up the voltage. Look at that. Looks like it's working great. I'm getting both current and voltage readings now. It looks like both the 6 volt and 12 volt paths are working. The 12 volt path does have significantly less current available, as you can see on the meter right now, with a 1 ohm load connected. I am suspicious that the smaller rectifier diodes are not functioning up to par. So here are the results. 5 volts on the meter matches up, 10 volts on the meter matches up, 15 volts is looking good as well. Here are some volts and current, also both looking great. I'd say this is a success. I am leaving some of the patina on this meter and uh, I'll probably replace those diodes in the near future. Okay, we made it. Thanks for watching and keep YouTube alive by pushing the like and subscribe buttons. I kept the old look and brought it back to functional. See you in the next one.